Hey everybody, thanks for joining us for a very special wine tasting that we're doing to help kick off our Chamabrate at home celebration. Everybody teaming up together to help St. Malachy School in the playground. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your donations that you've already uh, put forth. Thank you for your support of St. Malachy Schools. And it's a, it's a big start to what we really need to get done here. And speaking of, we wouldn't been able to get this started without our sponsors to really kick things off. So thank you to our silver sponsor, Plainfield Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery, and also our bronze sponsors Daymark Services and Kids Count Therapy. Thank you for getting us started. Okay, our wine tasting is taking place here at the Country Club of Indianapolis, and Sergio Cabrera, our man, is here. He is the food and beverage director here at CCI and the perfect guy to have uh, tell us more about wines. Hello, Joe. Thanks so much. That was a very nice uh, introduction from you. And everybody at home, hello. Nice uh, sharing this time with you guys. All right. Now, Serge, I got to tell you, I'm a bourbon guy. I'm sure we got a lot of people out there in the crowd that are bourbon people. Are my taste buds okay? Are, are they going to be acceptable to taste wine? Most definitely. There is uh, nothing better than just open your mind and just get ready to taste red, whites, and many other things that brings you happiness per se. <laughs> we love that aspect of it. Now, I also know that you do a lot of wine tastings here at Country Club of Indianapolis. Is there a right way and a wrong way to do it? Because I was only told the biggest glass wins. Is this okay? <laughs> well, do you that, bring your that, own? That's a personal, that's a personal uh, opinion, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> there is a, uh, there's a lot of uh, ways to, to try wine um, based on the, what kind of uh, product we're gonna have or sparkling or simple play a nice uh, flat red or white. All right, sommelier, that's the word for the expert that goes through and does things. I, I know one of the, to get things started with a wine tasting, you have to open bottles. What is the proper way for a sommelier to open a bottle? Cool, let's go and show you one. I have one bottle right here. Um, most of them are gonna be wrapped with aluminum, aluminum foil and sometimes they come with wax. Those are really hard to open, but take your time and just uh, be a little patient. The first thing we gotta do is use the uh, sharp uh, little knife we have in our openers and go around the neck. Go around the neck of every bottle, carefully put on some pressure with your thumb, and then once you have this little thing cut, you go and take the foil from the top. Best part is uh, you need to take the foil on the second lip of the bottle. That's gonna be uh, safer and, well, also elegant. I never noticed that. There are, there are multiple lips on there. That's what that's for on the top of the bottle. That is correct, that is correct. Um, well, this, the uh, next step is to just insert a little metal screw into the uh, cork, uh, preferably in the center of it, and just twist this a couple of times all the way to the end if you can, and just, Pull the cork gently, and with a little bit of uh, pressure, you take the cork Ooh, off. Nice. That pretty much is uh, the basic part of it. Are champagnes any different? Yes. Um, well, thanks to uh, technology these days, we have some champagnes or sparkling wines that they have a cork screw, but let's go for the uh, traditional way to open a, uh, a bubbly one. So what we do is we just peel, and again, we peel the uh, aluminum part of it, and we're gonna find a little bit of uh, wiring that holds the cork with the label. So what we do is just pick and turn. We gotta be very careful when we do this because sometimes the, pres the pressurization of the bottle can make the cork blow. So now what we're gonna do is just put a little pressure and voila. Time to enjoy. This is where you put your head underneath, Serge. That is exactly right. <laughs> that's awesome. So that's a sign of a good of a good champagne or a bubbly yes, wine, is. though, to have some of that happen. So yep, okay. Yeah. Yep. Well, let's try not to have the bubbles spill all over right. your hand. But that was a very pleasant surprise. <laughs> okay. Now some of the other things we have here. What's the bucket for? Well, the bucket um, is very simple. There is times when you have a tasting uh, that you go from a white to red or a, a sweet wine that you are. Let's say it's not your favorite. So what you do is you taste, okay, and you pour the rest on it, or it's called as a spit bucket. It started in the 1600s too, when you are not happy with the wine, you just spit it back. Or if you don't want to drink it, spit it over there. 
that's I find that rude. I think you should always take it all the way down, no matter what. I don't know. That's just me. Though. I agree with you. <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> all right. So, so how should we start a wine tasting? I know people are starting to get thirsty. So, do we start? What is it? Dry to sweet? Is that? Well, there is a way. Uh, there is a lot of places that do from whites to reds, uh, dry to sweet. The reason for that is. It's all about the flavors and textures. If you go, if you start with a sweet wine in the beginning, you're pretty much gonna kill the uh, taste buds going towards the dry. You're gonna make the dry ones taste uh, unnecessarily unpleasant. Okay. So you wanna go from the dry to the sweeter because it's the most uh, intense. Okay. So from what we're gonna taste here, what should we start with? Maybe the rosé? Right. Yes, perfect. Well, we're gonna try this rosé. This one is called uh, Pierce Par. It is an Alsace a Brut Rosé, which means we have some bubbles in it. And it's going to be fantastic. Let me just put a little bit Please, on now, it. Now, this glass, is yeah, that yeah, because perfect. of the bubbles? Yes, yes. Okay. This type of glass will help, will help you to enjoy and uh, see the beautiful bubbles that come with it. Also, will all will help you to feel the, um, the bouquet and the beautiful flavors that has uh, the wine inside. Okay. At this point, we're going to find... I don't want to be rude, but you only filled it up like that much. That I got a big okay. glass. Well, let's see if we fill it up all the way to the top. You can't let's stir see it. how much you can stir. Gotcha. It. <laughs> now, I also was told something. You want to look at kind of the sides and see what falls off. Is that something Correct. in a rosé that you look for? Well, that is uh, that is actually called the legs or the tears of the wine. Okay. Uh, what you do is see the um, amount of sugar or a content inside or alcohol content in the glass. So this one right here is gonna be nice, medium uh, medium to full body because the legs are coming nice, slow, and in a very uniform way. Okay, now, so should we smell it? Yeah, most definitely. The next step is pretty much to get the bouquet. The bouquet is gonna tell us all these uh, beautiful um, aromas that come from the fruit. At this point, we're gonna have Definitely a little bit of uh, smells, strawberry, yes. you know, light strawberries, uh, slightly acidic. I would say a little bit of lemon on it too. Our next step is to drink the wine or to taste it. Now that is called the palate. We're going to be able to find the condiments that are the spices, I would say, they are in the, on, on this grape. And also will help us to uh, see what the fermentation was. Ooh, that's really good. That's really mm. good. Now, I was told, too, that you really want to breathe in mm. as you're tasting because you, yes. the, taking the air in actually helps, helps exactly. the palate. Pretty much helps all your, your senses and your uh, uh, taste buds, too. There we go. That's uh, something. I'm my own bucket. Do you definitely love this wine? <laughs> <laughs> I do. That's something, very good. Yeah, something I can recommend with this wine. It's a beautiful... Herbal roasted chicken breast, Ooh. or a nice fish, even a salad with a creamy dressing. Those are just fantastic. Or you know what, if you feel like sharing, just drink it by itself with somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a, a color to, to, like a white meat or a fish or something, do you take the color of the wine and match it to the meat? You know what, there is no um, rules set in stone for people that, uh, wants to pair food with wine. It's a, it's a personal preference. Okay. You know, believe it or not, there's places where, in occasions where a beautiful full body Chardonnay will go perfectly with a filet mignon. Mm. That okay. is uh, unusual, but it's delicious too. All right, there's going to be some people, and hopefully you can check out some of these wines because we're going to give you our yay or our nay on these things. Right. But labels are very, very important. When we look at the Chardonnay, let's taste that one next. Point out some things on the label that are important. All right. Well, label is pretty much a marketing aspect of uh, any uh, winery or any wine. In this case, we're talking about Orange Swift. It's called the Mannequin. It's a beautiful Chardonnay. Uh, has a beautiful reputation, and uh, they're very artistic. Uh, all their labels are completely, completely out of this world. This one has a bunch of uh, mannequins. Uh, well, that's why it's called the mannequin. So let's go and take a little taste of this. All right, so this is the bigger glass. Yep, that's a bigger glass. Are we is there a reason? Glass? Yes, these are called the Bordeaux glasses, pretty much. Uh, what it does is uh, it concentrates the bouquet on the uh, medium section of the glass, so you can actually have a better uh, aromas and display of uh, spices that comes in it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put a little bit of this Chardonnay in the glass, and you're just gonna make a little turn like this. Okay. If you spill it, don't worry about it, it's wine. Yeah, perfect. Uh, like I said, our first step is to get the bouquet on it. Mm -hmm. Smells Enjoy good. It. Yeah, yeah, it smells fantastic. It smells fantastic. You have a little bit of 
open your senses right now. You're gonna find a little bit of a nutmeg on this. Uh, I would say vanilla. Uh, and you are right, after this one, this one's perfect. Yes, it, There's a good compliment there. Yep, I like it, I like it very much. Now let's go in and uh, take a look at the, um, the palate. The palate's okay. pretty much when you start drinking and you start having all these beautiful senses. Mm -hmm. yeah, I got some beautiful senses going on, Sergio. <laughs> this <laughs> that, that good stuff, buddy. This palette is this this one is just fantastic. It's gonna bring you some um, honeydew, a little bit of um, molasses, which is really rare for a um, white wine. Vanilla and also peach, nice and smooth, slightly acidic. But you gotta consider one thing. Looking at the legs, this is a full body white and definitely enjoyable. Um, something Mannequin. I can, yeah. Okay. Something I can definitely recommend with this is don't judge me for this, <laughs> but I can definitely tell you a nice New York strip steak will go really well with this because of the fat and the acidic factor of that. Also, fish, a nice oven roasted chicken, even the chicken alfredo sounds really good with this. Mm, well, cheers. Delightful. Or just some cheese. Oh, cheese platter. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm a big into that. Yep. Charcuterie boards, too. Mm, love it all. All day long. All right. Temperature of wines, maybe something we could get. I'd have helped you. <laughs> temperature was, temperature of wines. Is, is, is there an important, does it matter? Yes. Um, the, the temperature in wine is actually something very important um, for people that likes to have their whites chill and their reds room temp. Okay. But I personally think, and this is something very interesting too, to drink a white wine slightly to room temp, you will enjoy the grapes the most because your taste buds are neutral, are not mm -hmm. frozen, are not chilled. Right. You know, so you are ready to taste just the wine at its best. Okay. Of course, uh, Europe, um, Spain, Italy, they start actually chilling red wine too, which I'm very surprised. Tastes quite good. Not my personal preference, but yeah, I can definitely recommend a nice cold uh, uh, or chilled white wine. Okay, um, as we get to our last one here, and I believe it's gonna be, is it a cab? This is a, a Cabernet cab? Sauvignon, yes. Uh, grapes, America does a really good job of doing our own wines, right? It doesn't, you don't need to pay the extra of shipping them over here. We'd, we'd have some pretty good selections here, right? Yes, correct. Um, California especially, mm -hmm. Oregon, uh, Virginia, they are places that have been actually blessed with the terroir, you know, the land, um, the soil is fantastic, especially mm -hmm. California these days. Now what we're gonna do is try, this is called the Theorize, and I think you're all gonna enjoy this at home too. Theorize, Cabernet Sauvignon 2018. It's 100% Cabernet Sauvignon. So now there is something very interesting to do. We just drink white wine in this mm -hmm. glass, so since I didn't provide enough glasses, <laughs> what we're gonna do is we're gonna rinse the glass with the same wine. That way we avoid confrontation. I hate to see that. There we go. No confrontation here. <laughs> okay, well, I should actually follow that. All right, let's go, let's get to it. Uh, beautiful Cabernet Sauvignon, a big, big, big fan of this one. Theorize, uh, Napa Valley. Oh gosh, yeah. Mm. Well, the legs on this are, you can tell, mm. it's much slower kind of going down the outside of the glass. Yeah, well, what you're gonna see right here, let's look at the other uh, colors. We're looking at the legs too. Right. They are nice and uniform coming down slowly. That means the concentration of alcohol and sugar are higher, which is healthier, mm -hmm. <laughs> per se. It's good for you. Yes, it is. Uh, <laughs> let's look at the uh, color right now. It's a beautiful dark, ruby red, which I love. Uh, sometimes um, Cabernet Sauvignon can be nice in the uh, petroleum dark, which right. uh, drives me crazy. Let's see, uh, okay. Uh, very well balanced, uh, nice, uh, nice spices. I would say um, nutmeg, thyme, a little bit of cedar you can find with this wine. Oh yeah, definitely yes. Um, the bouquet, if we actually Pay attention to that, uh, like I said. Oh, you mm. did a slurp thing. Mm. See, I'd get in trouble. I'd be all over my white shirt if I went. Oh, man, this is good stuff. 
Oh, that's a good. Are we supposed to cheers? Are you supposed to clink glasses? I I do that without a reason too. So okay, yes, there's no that. right. There's no right. Absolutely or wrong. no. Okay. You can do that all day long if you want. <laughs> um, let's go for the uh, palate right now. We can have a little bit of coconut, molasses. I would say cigar box or cedar too. Oh man, this is all over the place. Um, this part on this red wine is, if you wait a minute or two, let it breathe. It's gonna taste phenomenal. And this is the kind of wine that you can share with a nice steak. You know what? Even like a fettuccine Alfredo I was thinking of. Or why share it? Just drink it by yourself. Mm. Well, cheers again. Well, cheers. And it's great for fundraisers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's we, the fun part of it. That's right. Well, I don't know about you. I've learned a ton. And I hope you have too at home. Hope you're enjoying your day. We're going to get uh, uh, going here and maybe try a little bit more off camera. But you do the same thing at home. Sergio, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. <laughs> and thank you for all the knowledge here at the Country Club of Indianapolis. Joe, it's been my pleasure. Everyone at home, cheers. Well, thank you to our sponsors again, our silver sponsor, Plainfield Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery, and our bronze sponsors, Daymart Services and Kids Count Therapy, and to our buddy Sergio. I feel like I make a lifelong friend. I've learned a lot about wine. Hopefully you have too. But pace yourselves. Don't forget, the live stream is coming up at 7.15 tonight for Shambabration. So 7.15 is what you're looking for. We'll start off with the kids segment first, so then we can send the kiddos to bed and we can continue to have some fun. But 7.15, it'll be right here on the same page that you're able to bid on all those terrific auction items. So we'll see you back here at 715.